Joined now by Pennsylvania Republican Congressman, Congressman Ryan Costello and our panel is back, Beth, John, and Zerlina. Congressman, welcome. Good to be with you, Katie. So a lot of um, uh, lawmakers, GOP lawmakers in Congress are, are pushing back on this. The president shouldn't pardon himself, as you just saw. Uh, but why are all the other Mueller attacks being allowed to slide? Why is Spygate allowed to slide? Why is Memogate allowed to slide? Well, number one, it's hard to keep up with it all, right? And number two, I think that a lot of members of Congress are focused on what they're doing legislatively and are trying to avoid having to weigh in on this on a daily basis. Some, such as myself, uh, have weighed in. I think that it's been well reported in terms of what Congressman Gowdy had to say about this, which I subscribe to uh, what his position is. And the moment that you do that, you're going to get whacked by a lot of Republicans in the process. So I think a lot of Republicans probably look in the mirror and say, what am I going to get myself into if I just give my honest opinion on what the president tweeted about this morning? And then you have to remember, <laughs> the next morning there's going to be another tweet, right? I mean, the pre this is a street fight, and the president is street fighting. And weighing in on it uh, too often really probably just puts you in the, in the middle of the fracas. Fine. Weighing in on it too often might put you in the middle of it. But then why um, join in on the street fight and try to take down somebody <laughs> like Trey Gowdy? I, I missed a little bit of the question there. Sorry, John, John coughed. Sorry, uh, why? It's okay. Uh, why, if you don't want to join in on the street fight, that's one thing. But if, if, if you, and you want to just focus on what you're doing in, in your, uh, your office and in, in Congress, that's fine. Uh, but then why go after Trey Gowdy when he says he saw no evidence that there was any spy in the, in the Trump campaign? Well, I agree. I don't think members of Congress should be going after Congressman Gowdy just for uh, ish giving his opinion uh, on the matter. Uh, my point was simply is I agreed with, with what uh, Chairman Gowdy had to say in terms of um, the, the, it not being Spygate. Um, but the, the other point I would like to make is for a lot of Republicans, it becomes um, in a lot of these districts, it becomes very easy to double down and just defend the president at all costs, because I will say to you, even in a district like mine, which is probably uh, one of, if not the bluest uh, district still on the map, there are Republicans all across this country that feel, and I watched your sh was listening to you a little earlier, feel that the president's a victim. Right? Yeah. They feel that the president is a victim. And so if you are a Republican weighing in on this um, in, in terms of the legitimacy of the investigation uh, and looking at what uh, Mr. Giuliani says from time to time on, you know, he could shoot Comey and pardon himself. I mean, that kind of stuff, it's not good. I don't subscribe to it. Uh, but for a lot of Republican members of Congress, they look at it and they say, what what benefit do I get for weighing mm. in on this, even if I might disagree with what the president is doing? So we talked about this in the 2 p.m. hour. I, I laid out four strategies that the, the president seems to be taking in order to discredit the, the investigation and protect himself. And the last one was what Phil Rucker raised today in The Washington Post, that he has been painting himself, himself as a victim for forever. Why does that work with Republican voters? Because uh, we're in a culture war and a polarized political situation. And uh, if MSNBC attacks him, Republicans are going to defend him. Conservatives are going to like him if you dislike him. If this network likes it, if Fox is good, MSNBC and CNN are bad. If Samantha Bee is bad, Trump is good. If Samantha Bee says something nasty about Ivanka Trump, Samantha Bee is bad. That hardens and solifies Trump's what support. What a sad time we're living in. Yeah, but it works the other way. I mean, it's the, I'm you know, saying, then people defend Samantha Bee. All I'm saying is the reason that we're in this situation, that it works, is that's one of the ways he got elected. We, we are tribes. We are now to very much two tribes. And you stay with your tribe. You stay with your team. Think about think about a bad player on a football team, right? You got a player, he's or a but baseball this player, is he not spikes. A football it. team, though. This is this is. I know, I know, you're not making I'm it. I know not you're praising it, but I'm just saying, if you're like a sports fan and there's a close call at second base, you support your team. But this is about an investigation. You don't, you don't, it's like saying, I want to be fair. But Let's this is about an investigation no of, of a foreign country meddling into our elections and whether or not that candidate that won was helping in some way or coordinating in some way. Look at this polling out um, for Donald Trump. Among Republicans, he commands the second highest own party approval rating of any president at the 500 day mark since World War II, only behind President George Bush, W. Bush, after 9-11. Zerlina. 
it, it, it's it's almost like they're, the facts be damned, right? Because I think that you're right. But the problem is, is that in the Fox universe, they're not using facts when they're talking about the Russia investigation. They're t they're smearing the FBI and saying that um, it's really Democrats who colluded, or that Bob Mueller is somehow trying to take down this president, even though, as we've said many times, Bob Mueller's a Republican, Rod Rosenstein's a Republican, and so it, if you turn on Fox News, it's a completely different planet. Um, in MSNBC world. World, um, I'd like to say that we use facts, even the facts that I don't like, right? I mean, there are times when I even have to say and criticize Samantha Bee for using foul language and saying that I didn't agree with the use of that word to describe Ivanka Trump. But I don't think on Fox News you would see the same thing where they're criticizing people on their own side. I think that we do that here a lot more often than they do over there, and that's the difference. It's a different planet with no facts, and each fact that uh, contradicts something that they already think is true, it just actually solidifies and validates what they think about in terms of the deep, deep but, state and their own conspiracy. But, but can I take it out of the realm of the culture war and the Fox versus uh, other media, which is certainly the case, and that's certainly happening. What I worry about, and maybe the congressman can address this, is the fact that Congress has now completely undermined its role as a co-equal branch yeah, right, of government. Right. That goes way beyond a culture war. That goes way beyond Fox News. It's something that will live with them for quite some time to come. The fact that they've completely abandoned any role of oversight over this presidency, even the it, 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 oversight that, that we do see going on, the, the House Intelligence Committee, Senate Intelligence Committee investigations into the Russia meddling has completely broken down on a partisan on a partisan basis. Nobody trusts the outcome of these in, investigations. Trey Gowdy is retiring. He's not even staying. He's only allowed to sort of speak his mind now because he's getting the hell out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. Congressman, what do you think? Well, it is a heavily politicized environment. I, I agree with what was said there. But the other thing to remember is we have a special counsel investigation where, by all accounts, there is nothing getting leaked out of the special counsel's office. So we have one side uh, utilizing their own set of facts or their own hypotheticals, the other side doing the same, and then they're fighting one another uh, all the while an investigation is ongoing. I, th I, don't, I think it's rather premature for Congress to step out and say, this is what we now need to do while the the investigation is still pending. Well, let's take it out of the investigation framing and put it into um, just the the laws that are being passed and the um, I don't know in tariffs. Look at a uh, listen to John Kasich yesterday on one of the Sunday shows. I have been uh, frankly shocked at the fact that our leaders think they got they have to ask permission from the president to do anything. This is very foreign to me. It's alien to me. When you are elected to the United States Senate or the United States House of Representatives, you have a duty to represent your district, but most important, represent your country, not to just be thinking about your political party. He's talking about the lack of pushback um, legislatively for Donald Trump's tariffs, which Republicans don't agree with. There's also the, an immigration uh, debate that just cannot happen because the Republicans won't send the president a bill that he refuses to sign. Well, I may be the wrong person to ask because I do a fair amount of pushing back. I, I, I voted for Kasich in the primary. I think, number one, on, on the tariffs issue, you're hearing a lot of Republicans speak out against uh, what the president uh, Why? has Isn't just done. Why? Is there any legislation then? Why just talk? Uh, so, uh, well, we do have uh, a bill that's in the Senate. We have not introduced a House companion that would not allow the president to go forth with imposing tariffs uh, without Congress uh, first giving an up or down vote on that. On the immigration issue, we're five votes short of, and I'm signed on to this, forcing a bipartisan uh, debate on the House floor uh, where the president will be able to put his bill on the floor. Uh, we have, and we have a, a, a more conservative House bill, we have a more uh, centrist House bill, and then the Democrats will be able to put a bill on the floor. I think we should do more of that. I think we should have more bipartisan debates on the floor. And that would be, in, in some respects, it's a pushback to what the president is is, is not doing on immigration. And in other respect, I think it's actually consistent with the, the roundtable that he had in the Oval Office saying, yeah, let's get an immigration deal done with the Democrats sitting in the room. So I think, I think that, that was just a photo op. Well, I, I'm sad to say that I think it was, too, because nothing's happened yet. I would like to see the president lean in and, and uh, demonstrate some leadership on the immigration issue. There are, there are instances where you do see Republican pushback uh, in the House and the Senate. 
But uh, back to John's point, this is a deeply divided country, and it does get back to cultural issues. I, I do genuinely believe that, and I've found myself very, very frustrated because, you know, we have the right, we have the left, but we do have a center, and I think a lot of folks in the center don't know what to believe. And what they end up doing is sort of sitting back and waiting for it all to play out and then being and then judging it after the fact rather than leaning in and debating it in real time because they look around and those who are most fervent are the are the left and the right and you get your head chopped off if you're in the middle trying to balance things out and use some common sense. Just my two. That's my two cents. I don't disagree, sir. Congressman Costello, thank you very much. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.